What is going on guys? Welcome back to the vlog. So a lot of you have been asking for an update on the Lake Cichlid, Cich, Lake, the Lake tank that's got cichlids in. This tank, this is, I'm talking about this tank. <laughs> so yeah, it's been running for over a month now, one month, one week, about approximately. Now we did have some issues to start with. It just went like poof, algae mode. That's because I had the lights too low. I think I found like the perfect balance now. I don't want to speak too soon, but it's starting to look good. Now it's starting to look good without me having to do loads of work to it. That's what I'm talking about because anyone can keep cleaning their tank like every couple of days, but that's not really what I'm into at all. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love a good maintenance session, but if you're having to do it every other day on a big four foot tank, you're just kind of like, this is not fun. <laughs> So I've literally just switched on the camera. This is how it's sitting. I haven't done any like maintenance on it. Whoa, at least a week and a half. I did a water change a week and a half ago and I scraped, scraped down the glass and I stirred up the stand because it was absolutely coated in like algae. And I'm talking the stringy algae, the dotty algae. I don't even know, all the algae basically. <laughs> so what we're looking at right now is way better than what it was like. I mean, I wasn't even happy with it enough to film it. Maybe I should have done it. Well, it's pretty much how we saw it that time after two weeks. It just went back to that status or status. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, then I decided to raise these lights up again. And since then, I think we've nailed it. In fact, I think I could probably come down a little bit more, but I don't want to risk it just at this moment because I want to make sure everything is looking good and you know, we're stabilized. So where are we at? Right, let me just take you around to the front here. Let's look down this glass and you can see that there's a little bit of algae on the glass. The algae on the rocks is looking really, really good. Um, oh yes, there's the fairy cichlid. Hello. Oh, bye. That was short and sweet. <laughs> see you again in a minute. Anyway, so the sand look. So if you look down here, there's a hint of sort of kind of algae, possibly some cyanobacteria as well, like especially that bit there. But I think that has remains from what was there last time. Hello, look at this, Julie. Julie de Chromis, I think it's called. Um, like that's how I pronounce it anyway. Looking beautiful, see you later. Yeah, so sand looking good, rocks looking good. Let's zoom out. Sorry if you can hear all that noise walking. It's because I'm just going around in my crocs. Kick those off. But yeah, this area is really cool. This is the action, this is the heart of the tank where the Maltese are. Every one of the Maltese now has got their own little home. They are in, in like a little harmony in their own little group. And also they do allow the fairy cichlid to sort of sit near, but that's the only one. And I mean, look at the size of it in comparison. I'm not surprised they're allowing that. But the rest, they all stay just back, which is ideal because you don't want any fighting looks. So they're guarding the territory there. They know not to get any closer than that. But this guy, do what he wants. <laughs> so if you guys remember before, the rocks were absolutely coated in that string algae or the sort of furry algae. None of that is on there anymore and I haven't wiped that off at all. It's just how it's gone. Again, getting the lighting levels right. Uh, down here, you can see, look at this. Some of the sag is starting to grow. That's brand new growth you can see there. We've got some of the algae still on those bits and so next time we do some maintenance, well, in a bit, I'll just sort of brush that all off and suck it up. We've got a little bit of cyano down on the sand, but again, I think that's just remaining from what was there before, because it kind of looks dead to me. It goes sort of clumpy and a dark green. So I think, hopefully, and after the next maintenance session, it should be looking really, really good. And not to forget, guys, I have got more of these awesome discus tops back in stock. There's links below, and I'll put one up somewhere here. So I've just added the higher quality range, a little bit more expensive, but it's like a finer, nicer con. Anyway, I don't mind spending them more. But I do have the basic ones as well. But yeah, go check them out, take a look if you want some. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, part of me is massively relieved that this is working out good. Let me tell you why. So. This is massively out of my comfort zone. I've never done anything that's just so basic like this in terms of just hardscape mainly and a little bit of plants. You guys know me, I normally chuck plants in and let them do all the work. I don't do anything then. And even if you're slightly out of whack with your lighting levels and that, the plants usually sort of grow to, to the right levels and it sorts itself out. So this is the first time I've actually had to really work it out and I'm so glad I have because it's getting my own skills better even for the planted tanks. It's all about stepping out your comfort zone. You've got to do it to grow. You know there is a fear that stuff's going to go wrong. You're not going to be able to maintain it or even handle it. 
I've still got that fear now that it's all going to go bad, but you just got to go for these things, haven't you? And I'm really enjoying the process, mainly because I'm learning. If you're not learning and growing, like what are you, what are you doing? If you can't just stay still, can you? I think this applies to most things in life. You'll get bored so quickly. So challenges like this are so fun. Even the problems are fun because you've got to try and work it out. And I mean, looking back now, it's so obvious. You're getting so much algae, raise the light. You haven't got the plants to combat it. So that's what I did, that's worked out. Hopefully what's gonna happen now, after we've cleared this all up even more, so it's looking absolutely perfect, is that that sag is gonna take off, that whole section at the back. Because I've got the lower light, the sag will grow taller. When it grows taller, it just looks so good, especially in that area where there's high flow, it should all come forwards down the tank as well. That'll look so good. Well, that's all the glass cleaned off, which is a nice and easy job. Next, oh, the, one of the multis just went in that. No, leave it alone, what am I doing? <laughs> yeah, so next is to get off all this sort of cyanobacteria and algae in this area. I'm just gonna use my tweezers for this. If you, I find that if you can just run them along the front, look, you can get rid of those bits. You won't cause any scratching if you just do it gently. In a minute, they're all gonna get angry because I've moved, I'm gonna have to move these around to clean it all up. But I'm just trying to sort of clump it all together at this point. Sorry guys, I'm so sorry. That's all right, they'll enjoy redoing it all again. So yeah, I'm just flicking it around, trying to clump it together, because in a minute, I'll be able to suck it out when it's all in the water column. And this worked really well last time. I can see the um, fairy cichlid down there as well. I'm gonna waft it with my hand as well to just to break off some of that algae. We don't want all of it to go, because it's not hurting, is it? But I just wanna stir up the front of all of this sand as well. There we go, it's given us a much cleaner sort of edge then, isn't it? Because you can actually see all the way along here, look, the different layers that they've built up by digging it all up. Um, just turning it all in. Again, I'm not scratching the, gra uh, the glass at all, I'm moving it away from the glass. I mean, if you don't want to use these and you're worried about scratching, there is an alternative, hang on. Yeah, you can just use a plastic credit card, you run it down the front like that and pull it away from the glass and the fresh stuff comes in. I mean, I should have just done that from the start, shouldn't I, to be honest, because that's working way better. <laughs> yeah, use a card, guys. Right, there we go, we're looking good again. I really have managed to sort out most of the issues there. There's still a little bit of algae on some of the plants in the background, but they'll clear in no time now, fingers crossed. I mean, pretty much all the substrate is looking great again. You know, the glass, oh, it just looks really good. It's kind of got a bluish tint to it as well. I don't know where that's come from, but you know, I'm not, I'm not arguing with it because Lake Tanganyika has got that kind of bluey tinge to it. I think it's a kind of sort of misting of the water still from the uh, sand being disturbed, but so what, I'm going with it. <laughs> it gives it a sort of eerie realistic look. It'd be cool if I could stay. Probably won't though. Listen to me wishing that the water would stay murky. No, no, that's not, I don't know why I even said that. No one wants that, do they? <laughs> So yeah, look, basically guys, we are just ticking along with the tank at the moment. I'm trying to get it balanced before I change things up again. I am looking for new fish. So, so many of you have been saying to me, you need to get the sardine cichlids. Well, I want the sardine cichlids. Um, they just haven't arrived yet. Apparently there's problems and delays with shipments and whatever. I won't go into that, but soon, soon, hopefully we're gonna add some more fish to this aquarium. I have got some exciting news for you. The tank down there I set up about three weeks ago for the cribs, remember, hoping that Simplify it so I could look after the fry if they had any well, guess what? I mean, obviously, they have had some. They're a breeding pair, they're doing well. I say they're doing well, I haven't seen the female for ages. I think she spawned and went back to lay more eggs straight away. Right, yeah, I think I came a bit close and I scared off Dad. But look here. 
Look at all those babies sat on that moss. They're just staying still because dad's gone, but in a minute he should come back out and help them again. Now they're a good size, look. They're all swimming around properly. None of them are being eaten. So hopefully we've actually nailed it this time. You can see there's a lot of algae on the sides here and on the moss obviously, but I'm just not touching the tank like last time. I don't want to disturb things. Um, you know, it's doing really well. Water parameters are brilliant, so there's no need to actually change anything at the moment. But look at that. So cool. Oh, there's dad poking his head around. Sorry buddy, I'm still here. I shall leave shortly. I'm right back. I'm zoomed in, remember guys, so it's not like I'm a big threat. What are you going to do? Look, they're up there. Be really interesting, I think, just to sit back and wait, just to watch him sort of collect them. He goes over the top, they all start buzzing like flies all around him. Okay, here we go. I think he's coming round. Doing a little bit of eating and spitting. What are you doing? <laughs> Gone back into the cave. So yeah, that's the main route into the cave. And they all live behind this rock here. Mum's obviously in there. A little bit worried because she doesn't come out for food, but I try and place it near the entrance and it all gets eaten. So I'm guessing she comes out at night or something. I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. She did this last time and I was worried that she was dead. That wasn't the case. Oh, look, look, Dad's peeked around the side. And they're all starting to follow around there. He's so aware that I'm here. Like, it's clever, isn't it? A real sign of intelligence there. Look at that, peeking around. <laughs> These babies are staying still. He's collected half of them. Can we get the rest of them, buddy? Come on, I, I mean you no harm. Another thing is that that little inlet for the filter is too close. And there's actually a few fry that have landed in the filter itself. They're all unharmed, so I'll get them out shortly. Where are they? There we go, look. See, they're all in this section here. So yeah, I can get them out, not a problem at all. I don't know how long they've been in there to be honest because I only noticed earlier on. Yeah, so this is the biggest and most amount of fry I've had last for this amount of time. It's been, well, they've got to be at least two and a half weeks old. I think they basically spawned as soon as I set up the cave room, which is brilliant because it means, you know, hopefully it means I did a good job. Oh, I forgot to mention to you guys, I took out the diver fish I had in there because two of them jumped. Um, if two of them jumped, it was as soon as they started spawning. I've, before that, they're absolutely fine in there. It's too small of a space, I think, for diver fish, basically. That's how I'm viewing it, because they were getting constantly attacked. So I just took them back. I'm pretty sure if I didn't take them back, then they would have all been killed. Like I say, this is just too small of an area for both kinds of fish. The male crib in particular gets massively aggressive when the baby's about. He does seem to be the parent that looks after these. I mean, the female's nowhere to be seen. So that is the end of the video guys, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Now remember to stay tuned, like, subscribe, subscribe if you want to see more updates on all the other tanks. I'm going to do more ones like this, you know, tank specific and keep them short so it's not like off topic. Anyway, I will see you guys on the next one. Ciao. I, what, bye.